Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. All right, so today I actually got to take a slight video tour of the Gibson Demo Shop. I'm not allowed to share that interview or anything like that, but it was nice to learn a little bit more about the program and its beginnings. And some more behind the scenes work, since I enjoy talking about them anyways. But hey, if you guys wanted to own that Zesty Tuxedo SG, the current owner of it did put it on reverb today. He's asking $2,850 plus $75 shipping. And as of the time of recording this, it is still available, but it has had a couple of offers on it. This guy actually reached out to me directly to see if I wanted to buy it, but I decided to let this one pass at a premium price. Because I'm hopeful that we'll see some other unique finishes come out of Gibson, so this wasn't like a one-off opportunity. I can tell you from what I saw today that I didn't see anything exactly like this, but there are a few other themes like this that might show up, so hopefully I can get the timing right to get one of those. But right after taking that tour today, I decided to check out the Gibson website. This is completely unrelated. There is a new Gibson exclusives collection. So you know how they have the original collection, the modern collection, like the Murphy Labs division, the custom shops. It appears Gibson's really going to town on this direct consumer market because now they have something only available on their website. They have went to town with some new custom colors and finishes. So I thought we would take a look at these today. So first off, just like American Musical Supply, they like to do limited edition green guitars. Sometimes it's olive drab green, sometimes not. Gibson has now released the third color that they've offered on the original collection Les Paul Special. And I don't know about you guys, I'm actually pretty pumped up for this one. I don't think I've actually done the full review and demo on the original collection special. I've done the Epiphone, and I thought those things were such a great value that they should raise the price on them. So a true Gibson version. I have owned one of the prototypes, but this one, it, it speaks to me. I love the olive drab color. It doesn't appear that they're asking any type of a premium for their limited edition finisher. I guess I don't know how long they'll be offering these things or if they've changed anything else. But previously, this was only a TV yellow finish, and then I think it was this year they brought out the Vintage Cherry. Honestly, I don't think these things are selling that well for them. So having a non-vintage color on this is actually pretty cool. I could see myself wanting to review that guitar. And it appears that they do have them in stock if you're interested. Earlier today when I was looking, everything was out of stock. I'm sure we'll see a video from Gibson talking about this soon. But the next one is actually a Gibson Les Paul Classic. So there's a few different limited edition colors of the classic that are dealer exclusive runs. For example, Sweetwater has an exclusive ocean green burst, kind of similar to like the Les Paul classics that they did, I think about four or five years ago. And they also have a pretty cool smokehouse burst. I have unboxed one of those. That is a nice finish in person, but I have not had one of these things yet. I'm not sure what other limited edition colors exist from other dealers, but this one, we have another green one, interestingly enough, olive drab this time. And typically the olive drab finishes, they look fantastic, but you normally find them on like the ES styled instruments. So seeing these things roll out onto the Les Pauls kind of has me excited. And the Les Paul Classic, it's a great model from the new lineup. You get the push-pull pots for added tonalities if you're interested in that. They don't feel quite as good as the 50s and 60s standards in my opinion. Like if I had to choose, I would still go 50s and 60s. I think ultimately it comes down to do you actually care about the push-pull pot controls or not? And how much you can afford. They are a $500 difference. But what I'm curious is Olive Drab Green is typically... A satin finish. Now, it doesn't have to be. There's definitely clear ones, but this one zooming in here. It, it almost gives me satin vibes, but now I'm kind of seeing the gloss. I want to see if I can find that in the specs here. Okay, it is a gloss. That would be awesome if they would offer like a faded version of that and have a satin finish. Maybe even give us a hundred dollar discount for it. <laughs> I don't know about that. But those are the two olive drab ones. Now we also have a couple of black limited edition guitars and by a couple i'm talking a lot so we'll go through these a little bit quicker so we've got the 50s les paul standard and the 60s finally coming in ebony now it's kind of like the gold tops it's a shame you're paying the same price as somebody who gets a nice flame top and i'm sure that they don't use the highest quality of figured maple underneath these i mean we, we could be wrong we could strip one down and find out but if you've always wanted a 50s Les Paul in a black finish, it is being offered as an exclusive from the Gibson shop itself. I mean, it looks like the rest of the specs are absolutely the same. But let me double check that. 
Burschbacher 1, Burschbacher 2, 1 and 2. Yep, they're the same. It's just a color difference. To be honest, I'm glad they offer it for the few people that would prefer an ebony standard. I would have loved it if they would have left the back natural because those things would have sold like crazy. It'd probably be a little bit easier for them not to have to paint the back. But a black top 50s or 60s standard, I would be all in for that. The straight up ebony doesn't really appeal to me, but hey, if it does you, they are available. But this, this is big. So it's only the 61 standard. It's not like the Vibrola tailpieces, at least not yet. They've just stuck with like the regular stop bar tailpiece, but they're offering this one in an ebony finish now too. Same price, $17.99. But it has been a long time since Gibson has actually offered an ebony SG. They've been doing all the cherries. Occasionally you could get white. But a lot of people like the black SGs because, you know, Tony Iommi and many other countless people. Because there's not been a lot of, you know, non-traditional colors outside of like the Pelham Blues or the sparkling burgundies that you could get on the specials. So a straight up ebony one of these, I can see this one being a hot seller. And they do have some in stock if you're interested. And it looks like it's coming with the same type of pickups that are in like the 60s Les Paul standard. So I think some people will get a little bit hyped about that if they were in the market for a brand new 61 standard SG. But honestly, guys, I love the new Gibson offerings, but a used SG is likely going to be a little bit of a better value. Now, the brand new Les Pauls, they're at such a price point where, you know, it almost makes sense to buy brand new. But 90s era SGs are really where it's at, in my opinion. But nothing wrong with getting a new guitar either. And I hope you're still with me here because we got a couple of cool ones. Check this out. 70s Flying V. It was initially only offered in white. It also had the white matching headstock. But now, take a look at this. We get a straight up ebony. They've also made the headstock black, including the truss rod cover. Now, I believe it was on Cesar's Instagram page. He was showing a guitar similar to this. So I'm wondering if that's what that was about. It still has the binding on the fretboard. We still have the dot inlays going on. But then we move on to the body. It's a complete blacked out vibe. The pickup rings are black. The pick guard is black. Your knobs are black. Your top right here is black. This really reminds me of the old seven string flying V. It just needs to be built in the string through 50 style to really capture that same look. But I could see some people getting really happy about this because the cream color, the cream white, it does look nice, but it's not for everybody. But this last one is what made me ultimately want to feature these in their own separate episode. I am 100% on board with this. I'm going to see if I can get myself one of these for a review and demo because it's beautiful. But I hate one thing about it. Okay, so this is an ES335 P90 in ebony finish. But what did they do to the headstock? This is a 335. Why do we have a Gibson silk screen? That makes me so upset. Please, please, Gibson, tell me this was just like a weird prototype and all the other ones are going to have the mother of pearl with the crown. Because as of right now, that's the one thing that stopped me from wanting to pursue it. Everything down here, I am all for. I love P90 pickups. I'm really falling in love with the semi hollow style guitars. I love, absolutely adore this pick guard, the way it matches with the pickup. I like that it's only single ply because the rest of the binding is also single ply. So it just works. Uh, whoa, no binding on it either. Huh, I guess that's something else I didn't realize. So here's an original one. You can buy it for $3,000. They also offer it in the vintage ebony finish, but this one, it's got the Mother of Pearl Gibson logo with the crown. It's got the same tuners, but take a look at this. We've got binding on the neck. You get a multi-ply pick guard, so it's a little bit fancier. You get the humbucker pickups, which are generally more expensive to buy on the used market. I'm not sure what Gibson's cost is. I, I, I guess I'm confused why this one is still three grand when they've really taken down the value of the aesthetics on the headstock and the neck. Like, I feel like this should be at least, at least $300 cheaper. I mean, can you even call this a 335 anymore? Like, wow, they really stripped this thing down. But hey, if anybody wants to do a new guitar day on this, I will gladly feature this in an episode. In fact, I'm really hoping somebody contacts me for that because 
despite its shortcomings, I bet this would actually be a really fun guitar. Because sometimes binding gets in the way. You don't want a bound fretboard. But at this price point, I, I kind of feel like I'm paying for that. So I don't know why we're not getting it. So that would be my biggest critique out of my favorite model on this one that they've just released. I don't know, was it today? Maybe before? Who knows? Because I'm not seeing anything else in the spec sheets that makes it special over the other one. But hey, it's kind of cool checking out these new offerings from Gibson. So they've really been building upon the demo shop, which is direct to consumer, but now brand new guitars. I wonder how dealers feel about this particular one because we've had many dealer exclusive colors, but to have a direct from Gibson version. In fact, maybe it's because dealers didn't want to have to carry so many different color iterations because like the 50s and 60s standards, they've got so many. I can't imagine these black ones would be top sellers. So maybe they couldn't get any dealers to like want to put down a big order for them. So they decided to go direct to consumer. Now, I think the special, they could definitely throw those things out to the stores. They would sell the classic. I get it. They've got a whole bunch of colors. So short of retiring one, maybe this is their best option. So it kind of makes sense for these guys, but like the 61 SG standards, I mean, I think they could sell those things in the store as well. Same thing with the Flying V. They're having a hard enough time keeping those in stock at places anyways. That's a hot seller. And this 335. All right, Chocolateites, thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.